Filmmaker Paul Wegner created the golem, how he came into the world, in the shadow of Germany's powerful defeat in World War I. The film was innovative not only in its themes and storytelling, but also in its cinematic execution. Using techniques and visual language that is still often mirrored today, Wegner crafted an experience on the silver screen that has managed to survive and reinvent itself with audiences throughout the history of cinema. The music you'll hear for this installment is by Marika Hughes, an acclaimed cellist and composer living in New York. She is accompanied by guitarist Shazad Ismaeli, who has performed with Yoko Ono, Laurie Anderson, Bonnie Prince Billy, and many others. Shazad's oral tapestries work perfectly with Hughes' dark drones in this piece, a perfect soundtrack to the golem.
Wow, what I really love about this film is that you can see Wagner's path yeah. through all iterations of him making this. You know, Tori, Wagner retold this story three different times. Uh, he told it first in 1914, mm -hmm. then again in 1917, and finally this edition that we're seeing in 1920. I, I think what's interesting about this particular capturing of the story is that between the 1917 version of the film and the 1920 version of the mm -hmm. film, Wigner went and served in World War I. And he had those experiences, he had those moments where he truly saw humanity's darkness. Mm -hmm. And I think that really comes across in this 1920 version of this story. 100%, there's a more sobering look at the Golem than we've seen in his previous iterations. Mm -hmm. And I think you can bring his own experiences to that. Going into war, I can't imagine, I have never been myself, but to have that and bring that back to your artistry, yeah. I just, I can't imagine. I can't either, but our guest today has some true insights into uh, the, the themes and the ideas that are explored in this particular episode that we watched. Maya Barzilai is the Associate Professor of Hebrew Literature and Jewish Culture at the Frankel Center for Judaic Studies at the University of Michigan. Her research focuses on comparative modern Hebrew literature. Her first book, Golem, Modern Wars and Their Monsters, appeared in 2016. And her second book, Golem, How He Came Into the World, an in-depth study of Paul Wagner's 1920 film classic, was published in 2020. We got the chance to talk to Dr. Barzilai about what we can learn from Wegner's interpretation of the golem. Maya, thank you so much for joining us today. We are both massive fans of your work and your research. And of course, we're talking about the movie, The Golem. But what drew you to the golem as a character, as an archetype? I know you've written two books on it. <laughs> yes, you could say I've helped develop the field of golem studies <laughs> in academia, but there are other people who are fascinated by this topic. And I guess for me personally, what drew me to this particular story is that it is a story of creation and of animation. And um, it is an exploration of what it means to be human because um, through the figure of the golem, um, humans try to create something in their own image. Um, sometimes it succeeds more, sometimes less, um, but it is an opportunity to meditate, at least in the mystical sources, on, human, on the significance of, of the human. Um, and in the later modern sources, um, it's always been an opportunity to reflect on what humanity is doing to itself, how it's destroying itself, what machines it's creating, uh, how it's uh, both animating and being creative, but at the same time also potentially delving into da dangerous realms. So that, that kind of dynamic, um, I was also always interested in World War I and uh, in that period fascinated me from actually high, being a high school student, I read the poetry of World War I and wrote about it. And, uh, and what drew me to that, I don't, I don't quite understand <laughs> to this very day. It's something very deep. Um, but I think the, the fascination in this particular, in my books, has been with how the golem becomes so popular and pervasive as a story, as a narrative, precisely in a period of immense, immense destruction in Europe and political upheaval, changes in Jewish life, but also in relationships between Jews and non-Jews. And all of those factors, how, why during particularly that time period, this figure is the one that captures people's imaginations. And there's not just the Golem film, films in the plural, there's also Gustav Meyring's novel about the Golem. There's also popular folklore tales that become translated into many languages and circulate broadly. So I can say that all of those things attracted me to this particular story, yes. And Maya, you mentioned uh, films. Uh, Wigner obviously, you know, retold this story more than once. Uh, he recreated uh, his, his own uh, golem uh, in, in a sense of, of this, this piece he crafted from uh, cinema. And can you talk about why he did that and maybe what changed for him between the, the various iterations of this tale? Yeah, and, and John, you, you really say correctly that the golem is meant to be molded and remolded, so it's not surprising maybe that artists come back and back and return to the theme um, and kind of take the clay and mold it again. 
Um, but there are developments, and, and, and I think, um, so first of all, the Golem is an obsession for Paul Wegener, a German theater actor turned cinema actor and director uh, and script write, play writer. Um, and he comes back to it three times, once in 1914, once in 1917, and then the famous film that you're viewing in 1920. Um, and in every iteration, he does something completely different different with the materials, and uh, I can say that one thing that we see between 1914 and 1920 is the immense development of, the, of cinema as a technology, right? He's able in 1920 to do things that he wasn't able to do in the earlier fil film, which is to recreate a fantastic Prague the way he imagined it, to create this immense set design um, built by a famous uh, German architect, Hans Prudzig, um, to have special effects and atmosphere uh, that he couldn't make in the 1914 film, which was a little more simple in terms of its plot. Um, the other thing is the, the war years that intervened brought him to return to the film from a more dramatic and tragic kind of perspective. Yes, the film supposedly ends well, and we're not going to uh, do any um, spoilers right now, but, but it is very tragic along the way, um, and what happens both to the, some of the characters, to the ghetto, and to the golem itself. So in the earlier films are more comedies and dramas in which all the monster is destroyed at the end and all ends well. So I think like he himself thought that the, and other critics said that he didn't handle the materials seriously enough. He didn't take it seriously enough. Um, and then the, the last point maybe that drew him to the golem, that's for me the crucial point is the fact that the golem was a quintessential cinematic object. Um, it was, in essence, all about cinema, right? Because for, for Wegener, it's what cinema could do is to animate the inanimate, to take objects and bring them to life. That's something you can't do on the theater stage. Uh, for him, that was what a moving image could do and what especially um, technological trick, you know, the, he was experimenting with double exposure in earlier films with tricks, cinematic tricks, and photography and the camera were for him, the true poet, that's what he wrote, of cinema. And so the golem was the stuff of film. 100%. I think when we were first starting to talk about this film, John was like, you're going to be surprised at what they were able to do in 1920 and how modern the film still feels. And I think a lot of that too is, like you were saying, is his experience with World War I and bringing that to this film. Can you talk more about that and how he brought his personal um, journey to this final film? Yeah, so the first film was screened actually while Paul Wegener, an actor age 40, was fighting on the front in Flanders. Um, he was a volunteer um, who joined the army. And so uh, I, I think it's really interesting that you know, critics knew that he was fighting while the, the first film was being screened and they remarked on that. Um, the fact that an actor could be um, in a life and death situation, and here we are um, screening his film, was actually remarkable for the time period, first of all. And then during the war, he experienced atrocious battles in which most of his comrades um, died or were injured. And he himself came out of them a hero of sorts. He helped others, um, but also very injured in the sense that he had what he called a nervous heart condition, which we might call PTSD. Uh, which led to fatigue and led to um, the inability to cope with with everything um, around him. So he and he writes about the war in very very uh, negative terms at that period in his letters and diaries. He talks about the wars being monstrous. Speaking of monsters, he talks about the, how depressing it is, how the absence of leadership, the fact that you know everybody's cannon fod fodder. So the the terms that he uses are evocative. And he uses the term clay, by the way, to talk about kind of, first of all, he's himself submerged in the clay of the trenches. And he talks about his old uniform being covered in clay. Now think about what the golem looks like, molded out of clay. So so for me, the, the golem really is an image of the soldier coming out of the mud of war. Um, and also the muteness of the golem represents possibly, um, you know, the after effects of war and the inability to talk about it. 
um, his own trauma and his own sense of, of fragility. And at the same time, it is a hero, right? It is a very strong figure. So there is a fantasy there that other critics have talked about, of, you know, creating this ultimate soldier that cannot be tired or work too hard, like the soldiers in the World War work. So there's so many, you know, obviously, like with every myth and, and character, there's always conflicting and uh, opposing kind of strains in in this story so some of that can, comes to be but i want to also stress that for a film coming out in 1920 so two years after the end of the war in which germany was defeated this is also a film about national recovery in my reading of it this is a film in which he seeks to to, to find a way for germany to move on and what it would look like if the germans came to terms with who they are and actually accepted the others in their midst and actually, you know, didn't um, engage in warfare in the same way. So it's also a film about finding one's humanity after the war. Thank you so much for sharing all of your insight into this with us. Next time on Reboot Rescored Presents The Golem, we'll be taking a look at the Golem's frequent reappearances in the pages of literature and how artists and writers are continuing to explore the story in new ways. Thank you.